Good afternoon. Today is Monday, the 25th of uh, May in this 2020 year of our Lord. I want to first thank um, many of you who offered me uh, birthday wishes, well wishes yesterday. I was truly overwhelmed by the wonderful response and kind thoughts uh, that were shared uh, with me. Uh, so many thanks again. Today uh, is a national holiday for us in the United States of America. It is Memorial Day. To be clear, Memorial Day has its one distinction. I believe its origin dates back to the post-Civil War uh, when there were many in this nation that was once divided over dissension between states and other issues that uh, many had died in that war. Brothers and sisters, families and members uh, crossed lines uh, on either side and uh, parks were established for not only the Union and the Confederacy soldiers that were buried, but a day was established uh, shortly thereafter to commemorate those who died, not just those who served in the war, but those who served and died. So today is in memory of all of those who fell victim to the aggression of war, be it on our soil or on foreign soil. And we give thanks and pause to remember the sacrifices of those who put their lives forth for the sake, which we hope is most cases, we would engage in war for the sake of restoration of harmony and peace where there is discord. Today, I'd like to share a few thoughts on that uh, from a Luther, Lutheran perspective on uh, mainly war and peace. And to remember that certainly as Christians, our main goal be their aggression that we have to engage in to protect the citizenry of our land or to protect their faith, uh, that the ultimate object uh, objective is to sue for peace and for concord and for harmony and that the gospel calls us to live in a matter of peace and love toward each other. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading of the 120th Psalm. When I was in trouble, I called to the Lord. I called to the Lord, and he answered me. Deliver me, O Lord, from lying lips and from the deceitful tongue. Which shall be done to you, what shall be done to you, and what more besides, O you deceitful tongue? The sharpened arrows of a warrior, along with hot glowing coals. How hateful it is that I must lodge in Meshka and dwell among the tents of Kadar. Too long have I had to live among the enemies of peace. I am on the side of peace, but when I speak of it, they are for war. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you bless the peacemakers and call them children of God. Give us that peace which the world cannot give, so that your church may be freed from the schemes of the arrogant and devoted to work for peace, may go forward joyfully to meet you, the Prince of Peace, our Savior, and our Lord. Amen. From the prophecy of Isaiah in the second chapter, many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Here ends the reading. Martin Luther spoke about the nature of war, be it Christian war or justified war relevant to being citizens that support their government. And I'd like to share this little piece uh, from the book Faith Victorious. 
the resist not evil passage in the Sermon on the Mount has given theologians of all times considerable difficulty. At no other point do the views of state and church impinge upon one another as sharply as here. The state must, under all circumstances, preserve order and protect its subjects from violence. Against stubborn evildoers, it must be able to use force when necessary to realize these purposes. At the same time, limiting the freedom of its subjects as little as possible. The church, on the other hand, must under all conditions preach and promote peace and love. Luther expressed his thoughts about war in his treatise, Whether Soldiers Too Can Be Saved, in 1526. He views the question of war largely, largely from the legal standpoint. War is an event in the realm of justice. Either it destroys the divinely decreed peaceful order, or it serves to restore peace. To the extent that it destroys the order of justice, it must be classified with robbery, plunder, murder, adultery. To the extent that it serves the cause of peace, it is a punitive and protective function granted by God to the state, in which case war serves the cause of love. Luther asks, what is proper war, if not the punishment of evildoers and the preservation of peace? When a thief, murderer, or adulterer is punished, an individual criminal is punished. But when proper war is waged, punishment is meted out to a whole group of criminals whose crimes are in proportion to its size. To Luther, the justification of war was no problem since in principle the same sword was in operation in the courthouse and on the battlefield. War is punitive action. The character of war as right or wrong depends on the status of the group that initiates it. In the medieval territorial system, the lowest authority was the lower nobility. Above them was the princes, were the princes and rulers up to the emperor. Highest in this authority of power was God himself. Even here, Luther does not attempt to create a theory for the justification of war. His purpose was to enlighten men's consciences and to make it possible for them to engage in military activity according to God's will. And for this reason, he found no great difficulty in justifying war under certain circumstances. Each of us stands on the principles of our faith and of our commitment. Commitment to our nation often employs people to stand up for that which is not just, to stand against the injustices of the world and has forced nations to war against one another. In good Christian conscience, Luther never compelled a Christian to stand down against serving their government in a rightful way as an instrument of God's peace. But the objective, I think, of any war and any incursion of that sort should always be for peaceful resolve, for a return to a normalcy where people are treated justly and fairly, where persons can live at peace within their households and with each other. And so through history, men and women have waged war against the travesties of injustice, against aggression, against their own properties, and it has been the reality of our sinful condition. Nonetheless, each, I think, incursion as a war that we would enter into as a nation of believers in a higher power has its own purpose that eventually that war will come to an end and that things will be righted that were once wronged. And so our purpose and direction is that when we have sent our men and women into harm's way and they have died, we honor them for that service. We give thanks for the gift of the sacrifice that they were called to make 
And we pray, heartily I pray, this day and each Memorial Day, that we remember not only that gift of life given for the sake of others, but we pray that no others will have to go forth to wage war in any way, and that peace will be the resolve in the way in which we are called to live, one with another in this worldwide community. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, you give us this blessed day, a day at the beginning of a new week to have our life and being. But today our nation sets aside a time to remember those who made the sacrifice in the times of war and aggression, the gift of their life given up, taken from them, but kept by you. We're grateful for that sacrifice and we honor those departed. And we pray that there will be future generations that will know war no more, where, where sword and spear and gun can be resolved into that which brings forth creation and new life and hope. Bless us, O Lord, in this day, that as we gather as families with friends in celebrations and in observances of the time apart from the routine of life, we might be mindful of others and the purpose and reason for the day. Lord, we pray for those that are in the orders of service in this nation, who serve in the Coast Guard and the Marine Corps in the Army and the Air Force and the Navy and in the Merchant Marines. People who take a time apart in their life to look to the needs and the well-beings of a nation that they would protect. We thank you for their service this day. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would care for each of us as we have need, for those that are ill, for those that are dying, for those whose households and families may be disrupted by disharmony of any sort. We pray healing for a nation that has been broken and torn by illness as well, that it might find a common ground to stand together to rebuild an economy and lives that have been troubled through this COVID pandemic. And we ask that you would hear our prayers in this time of our own reflection and silence. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And thanks be to God. Amen. I apologize for the quality of sound and for video today. I left my tripod and my special microphone at church on Saturday. Uh, it looks like we are sincerely considering returning to worship. We're a small congregation and we would have an ability to do so much easier and readily than larger congregations that must deal with more significant numbers than we. But as whatever your church's decision is, I pray that you'll continue to seek a way of worship. I'll continue to record our services as best as I'm able and post those. Uh, they'll be recorded at the time of worship uh, from this Sunday 4th and posted when we would return home. But they'll be there for your viewing, and, uh, and I hope they will still be meaningful to you. And I will continue this daily devotional process uh, as long as the Lord calls me to do so, and I have the energy to sustain me in doing that. It's been an honor and privilege. God's blessings. Have a great day. Amen.